Thanks for staying with us now. Nollywood actress Yabo Ojo narrated how she was brutally raped five times. Um, Ojo revealed this in an interview, you know, an episode of Bear It All with IY. She stated that she was first raped at the age of 14, but refused to tell anyone because it was like a taboo to be raped at that time. Now, as a woman reading her ordeal, it was so painful for me. But what caught my attention was in the comment section, right? Um, comment section where as, uh, as the pain that I felt soon quickly turned into anger, you know, reading what some people had penned down on, you know, her ordeal on the subject of rape and its impact. I'm sure most people do not understand what the impact of rape is. So according to reports, right, about three in 10 Nigerians, that's 26%, disclose that they know someone who has been raped in the past and the rape victims were particularly minors and young adults aged between one to 15 years. Now that's about 72% and 16 to 25 years, that's about 24% respectively. This statistics implies that one in every three girls would have experienced at least one form of sexual abuse by the time they reach 25 years. So when you read a comment, like what um, I displayed earlier, that I, what I, I'm about to display, I, um, if they can just find that comment for me. Let me pick just one out of those comments that you know, the guy was talking about. Yeah, yeah, this is the comment now. Rape is an offense, whether present or past. But I want to ask, what have you been wearing before you got raped? Have you been seducing men? Have you been collecting money from the rapists before you got raped? Hmm. Note, indecent dressing will attract uncontrollable men. So when you read this kind of comment, you know, what is the hope to fight this sexual violence that we're talking about? What's the hope that we're going to win it, right? So please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WeShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WeShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 I think I'm so upset today. <laughs> I don't even know how to coordinate myself because... Um, Apart from that comment that I read, there was one other comment where the guy was talking about, you know, five times, you know, where he yes. said... Like, why would people believe this story? Yes. Um, that if a lady is raped five times, then that means you either cooked up the story or something yes. is just Yes, let me read it. That's from the person that has a, a handle of Alesh Prince or something that says, and people believe this kind of story? Doesn't, it doesn't take a genius to know five different rape cases over many years on one lady means either the story is cooked up or there's something very wrong with the lady. Okay, so let me calm down and first of all hear your initial thoughts on this. Okay, I it's think, open house. I think it is appalling that um, over the years we're encouraging people to speak up. And then, if, first of all, I applaud the Yabo Joe because your scars are beautiful and even more beautiful when you open up and use it to help other people, which was why she shared the story. Okay, and now we live in a society where we are encouraging young people. Even some men are coming out to say, you know what, it's okay to share your rape cases, but it hurts when you're sharing it and you're facing judgment at the same time because some of these comments, they're not just men. I read them, some of them were ladies as well. So if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're going to blame the woman, because I can so relate with what she went through. Especially, I think, the third kid, a rape scenario because she went to the guy's house. I have been in three near-rape cases. And this was on situations where, you know, you meet a guy, he looks good, first date, second date. By third date, he's like, okay, shall I come and know my house? Let's hang out. Jennifer, you can relate. You know, let's mm -hmm. just hang out. And it's, it's like a norm. And then before you know it, it's like, this, there's always this routine of, are you hungry? Let's watch movie. Let's watch Netflix and all that. And you're like, okay, I maybe don't want to look too rigid or thereabout. You know, I went through it three different times. And I told myself, you know what? I don't care if you're Jesus. I'm not visiting your house. Do you understand? So I can completely relate with them. And it's only a man who doesn't understand, who refuses to be sensible, mm -hmm. that, that, that would come out and make all these stupid comments. I, like I call it, I barely use like strong words, but I'm going to call these comments stupid it's and the senseless. Most in, the most senseless it's thing, the most sick thing to say, you know, about rape, the, the most sick thing, the most senseless thing to say about rape, you know. How would you, but let me come to you, Jennifer. <laughs> when it comes to rape topics, yeah, it's very triggering 
for me and um, every time I see a story out there and I see the comments I just get really sad sometimes I just cry because I can relate and it's so annoying that out of every 10 women about nine of them can actually relate to sexual abuse sexual harassment molestation rape it is so annoying and i think one of the most annoying thing about rape cases is the fact that there is no evidence mm. Mm. you can't prove it mm. it's your word against his i mean there was one that she said the one that you talked about the third case where she just couldn't get the friend to she, her ex yes she went home and went straight into the bathtub had her bath and just cried in the bathtub and somebody now comes up and says that this story is cooked up. It's cooked up. Like, who does that? How do we even find, I mean, real solutions to, you know, to the, what's it called? To rape cases in Nigeria. When all the time, any time a woman comes up, you hear comments like this. I mean, let us bring up more comments. Because I'm so upset. Like, do you know, the way, I think it is my, the anger that is showing up. You know, because I don't even know how to make sense of this. And so to this young girl, she says, oh, almost every Nigerian lady has been raped at one point in her life. And she's not making this up. It, then somebody now says, seems rape is now used as a form of seeking relevance. How can you say this, whoever you are, Ima, whatever you call yourself? How can you say this? Let me cut in. You know, it's, it's very funny when people come out to say, oh, you're accusing a man of rape. Because you want to ruin his reputation. It's very funny because Iyabojo just came out. Iyabojo is already popular. Mm -hmm. She came out and she has shared her story. I don't know if she named any names or anything like that. But now we know the amount of victim blaming we get every time there is a rape case. So please, whose reputation am I trying to destroy? What am I trying to what gain? What relevance are you trying what to gain? What relevance am I trying to gain? Because I know if I come out to tell my story, people will blame me for the rape. People will blame me for getting sexually harassed. People will blame me for getting sexually molested. So what am I trying to gain exactly? So there was this comment mm. uh, about someone asking questions. I think about three. First, what have you been wearing before you got That's raped? That's the first comment. That oh, got right. me okay. very pissed. Have you been seducing men? Have you been collecting money from the rapists before? Are you serious? Have you been seducing men? Listen, it's easy to throw blame. That's that's childishness that's immaturity because if we're going to be honest with ourselves majority of the men we see moving around they watch porn mm. and so a man who watches porn has lost 50 percent of his self-control already so let's say you have a hundred percent and you're watching uh, uh, pornography. Uh, pornography yes you've lost 50 percent of that self-control so the remaining 50 percent is like oh my goodness hold myself it's it's it gets harder do you understand? Because your human imagination is real. Especially if, if you're lazy and irresponsible enough to, to not manage your imagination. It's not about seducing. Listen, I am human. I'm an actor. My imagination is strong. I can stand here and imagine anything I want. And imagine is right in front of me. So don't tell me about And for a man, his imagination is even way stronger than that of the human. Way stronger and more sexual. So you don't blame it on women. A lady can wear their long gown. Let me tell you something. I, I'm in the media department in my church, right? So I carry the cameras. And you know me, I love to wear long dresses to church. Listen, girl, I would wear my long dresses, carry my camera, and be moving around. And people are still watching my bum. Praise and worship is going on. And they're still clapping and looking at my bum. But like, hold on. How do you tell me is what I'm wearing? That's like, that's, you know, I'm not going to use some words, but that is such an irresponsible statement. It's, it's like throwing blame game that doesn't even make sense. Find another excuse. It's not valid. I was in primary school. Mm when I first got sexually harassed by my teacher. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> primary school. I was literally in primary four. How old was I? My uniform was very long. Everything, nothing. So please tell me how I was seducing my teacher and why he felt the need mm -hmm. to actually come after me, touch my boobs, or try to sexually harass me in one way or the other. How did I seduce him? Mm -hmm. I was a child. Okay, now we see how the Muslim women dress, fully covered. Mm. But guess what? They get raped too. 
So what, what, what exactly are you saying? So what are you saying? See, there's no excuse. Because when I keep hearing this kind of things, because people say, oh, this rape is a conversation that, oh, every time that... We will keep on talking about it for as long as we go to the comment sessions, I'll be sections when people narrate their ordeal on rape, and we see comments like this, we'll keep on talking. Now, somebody now says, five different times, I think it's once beaten, twice shy. Where is your own shyness? Like, why can't people be sensitive to this? Now, I work with, I, I used to volunteer with an NGO that we go to secondary schools to talk to young girls. And there's one of our team members, fantastic counselor, she's grown up to her, she has four kids now. She would always narrate her story of sexual abuse to the girls. And she said something that it stuck to my head forever. She said, Uwa, once you have been raped, once, right once it's it's almost like it is stamped on your forehead mm. that here am i come and rape me i'm available so it is she they took her to her pastor because they thought it was the pastor raped her oh, God. they took her to, as in yes uncle raped her they took, everywhere she went to you understand the men because it she said it looked at at some point like it looked madness. like a stamp on her forehead that i am available to be raped so when somebody comes up with a statement like five times, whatever, whatever, I'm wondering, do you even think? Do you understand the psychology behind the person that has been raped? Do you know how battered the person feels? Do you know how worthless the person feels? It takes the grace of God for the person to be able to come out of that. Now, when people are talking about uh, what you wear, right? Recently, I just told myself that in my house, I want to be wearing my lingerie. Because I cannot be having lingerie and I'll be bringing it uh, every, every once in a uh, blue moon to wear it. I wear it every day. And the lingeries are real lingeries that are really, you know, they really transparent, yeah. sexy, trans see through, share ones. But the days that I am in the mood, fine. The days I'm not in the mood, my husband understands. It takes a real man, you understand, to see a woman. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And say, you know what? Yes, I might be hard. Yes, I might be turned on. But you know what? Since you say that you're not in the mood, maybe your body is not feeling like it today. No, we sleep no. and we'll be, we'll be fine. No, is What no. gives you the right as a man to think you can look at me and look at me as a, 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 an object to be oppressed? Look at, look at the story. For the, the third story, where he brought out a knife. Threatened. His eyes were blood red shot. And, there and that was when she said, you know what? I've seen this game before. Let me just give it. As for the person that was talking, did you even read the story? Because some people are so daft, they did not read the story. They don't the read. fifth case of rape in this case, read. where armed robbers, armed robbers came to their house. At this After time, she was already married. Married with children. With children. Armed robbers came to her, their house, and raped her. And somebody still opens their mouth. Like, so, when we are talking about these things, people should please understand. You are not the victim. We are the ones receiving it. Men, yes, they, they have been raped. But you see, men do not come out to talk about rape because they, they enjoy it. But, but a lot of men were, were sexually molested by their house help or the big aunties living with them. Most of them, their first sexual experience was with either house help or aunties Auntie living with them. But they don't consider it as rape because they are men. And this is the psychology that we should start to change. Because this is the month where we are celebrating women, right? And yes. I'm choosing to oh. challenge this. It is so wrong that every time a situation of rape comes up, you come out and you say, what was she wearing? Like, even if I go naked, does this give you the right? It doesn't. It doesn't. It brings me to this point that a lot of people do not under... They, 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 un, they know what consent means, but when it comes to a woman's body, all of a sudden, consent means nothing to them. But let me tell you the dictionary meaning of consent. To give permission for something to happen... Or agreeing to do something. If I keep my money here and, I, and you ask me, can I take it? And I say no, you will leave it. Mm -hmm. Because you already know that if you take it, I will call you a thief. So when I tell you no, do not touch my body, do not touch my breasts, why do you still feel the need to push? Why are you still trying to coerce that person? Or there is also this thing that when a woman says no, it's like because women are so fond of changing their minds, 
you know, so you can say no and then after a while you can get persuaded and you say yes. I've heard that a couple of times. I'm like, no, listen, I don't know the number of people you've been around, but when I tell you no, from the onset, that no is no. Don't even bother. So I think women, we need to be more firm with the words no, that we say. No, no, seriously. Because times, a lot of women... There are some situations where even mm -hmm. you as a woman, right, when a man is caressing, you get turned on. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But somewhere at the back of your mind, you feel like, no, I don't think I want, I'm ready for this now with this person. It is still okay for you to be turned on. Yes. Maybe that's where some men take it. They mistake it to be consent. As long as she tells you no, even in the in the heat of the, the, heat the of, of the or whatever, as long as she says, I don't think I'm ready for this, that should automatically tell you. Hmm. Even if she's saying it subtly, like I am not the kind of person that would shout. I'm not the aggressive person. I can tell you no nicely. I'll say, Oh no, I'm not ready for this. I can do that. I know myself. But that does not mean I'm telling you yes. Exactly. So it's not every woman that will come out violently and say, No, I'm not doing this. Yes. No. <laughs> I can tell you very nicely that, oh, I don't think I'm interested in this. Right. I will say it softly. I will not insult you. I will say it, I, I might even say it with a smile on my face. And it's very funny that you have to actually say it with a smile on your it, face. Because make you're make, trying to make him feel good yeah. about it or not to bruise his ego. That. Why, like, why, why do we that. have to I've do been that? Of, like I why? told you, I've been through several harassments. And then the near cape races is like three of them that I can remember. So each time I have to say, you know what, I need to go or stop hugging me or don't touch me like this or thereabout. It's always like, um, um, but you're too aggressive about it now. You should have said no nicer. You should have been, you are too mean, you're too rigid. I'm like, I'm... I'm I'm not trying to be you know nice what? to you. I'm, I'm not trying to be pill. nice to you. Let me take a break because uh, I think this 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 conversation I came with uh, with vengeance. <laughs> you would think that so the thing is you would think that I have been raped. I've not been raped, but it does not take away the feeling. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I know what it means to be a gentleman. I live with one. Mm. So you cannot come up with. I mean, so when I hear stories like, oh. It is what she's wearing, or she's, she's what... No! I live with a man, and I know. Because also, there are cases of where you hear, oh, husbands raping their wives. Yes. Right? Fathers raping daughters. If your wife is tired, and she's exhausted, you should just pat her back, hold her hands, and sleep. Right. You understand? Right. It's not all the time she's in that mood. If you want to say ten times, give it to him ten times. No, it's not everyone that has that strength. So we're going to open the phone lines when we come back from this very short break. We're going to open the phone, phone lines and we're going to hear your thoughts. If you've been raped before or you have an, a, an experience, let us know. But today we just want to help some people understand. You can't keep on bringing this blame game to people that are supposedly victims. Stay with us. We'll be right back.